still hurting from damage caused by Hurricane Barrel, how help is reaching residents that's straight ahead. And one major airline faces delays from Friday's tech outage, while most other airlines say they've already recovered. Plus, the Secret Service director testifies in front of Congress. Hear what she says about the attempted assassination of former President Trump. And yet again, we've still got more scattered showers and thunderstorms out there in our midst this morning. They're going to continue today, tomorrow, and the rest of this week. I'll tell you how much we're still expecting in terms of the weather coming up. Premier Prospects Baseball and Softball are preparing for Midnight Madness on Friday. That's in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning, Crossroads. Hope you're having a great start to your already rainy Tuesday morning. That's right, yes, and that you're taking advantage of the time you have before the rain for some of us gets here. That's right, we Parker. We've got lots of rain out there this morning. Are we going to get wind today too, Parker? No, I'm not really expecting too much in terms of wind. So in fact, a gentle rain? Yeah, mostly like a, like a no, I'm not going to say a gentle rain, but maybe <laughs> more like a moderate or a heavy rain. We're going to have lots of rain today. We're going to look at that in just a second, because right now, if you're tuning in with us, you're looking live in Victoria. You've got lots of clouds out there on your camera, and also you've got a raindrop right there on the right side. That's because there are a couple of showers right here in Victoria. Like I said, we're going to look at that radar in just a second, because right now still, if you're not seeing the rain, it is still plenty warm and humid out there, sitting at 76, most of us in the upper 70s, some even low 80s, but still plenty humid as well, aiding in those temperatures. But the humidity is going to aid all the rain that's out there this morning. And like I said, looking at that radar, as promised, we got lots of showers out there, and they're going to continue like that as we go into the later morning. You look at that, you can see looking on your future radar, going into the later morning, like I was just saying, and going to the noon time, you can see it's going to become a little bit more widespread in the afternoon, that is. But then in the late afternoon, sometime around the time you're getting off work by 5 p.m., that's going to start kind of dying down a little bit. And then going into the overnight hours, that's going to be a different story because we're going to have more showers developing, kind of like what we saw uh, just after 3 a.m. this morning at about the same time tomorrow morning more showers and thunderstorms developing going into the afternoon. The good news is no severe weather is going to be expected. And we're looking at that here on your National Weather Service's severe weather outlook. This is just general thunderstorms expected, not marginal risk for severe weather. But we do have an alert day issued, even though there's not severe weather, because the risk is going to be heavy rain up to three to five inches possible for some by the end of this week. Although you could see some strong wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour and also moderate lightning activity. But that's going to last up until Thursday, I'm thinking. But the good news is after the rain is all said and done, the sun comes back out and Maybe bad news. We are right back to the heat, and we're going to take a look at that later on sunrise. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Disaster survivor assistance crews sent by the Federal Emergency Management Agency are going door to door in two Crossroads counties. They're starting in the south end of Jackson County and in Palacios. The FEMA representatives are assessing hurricane barrel damage. They will be carrying FEMA government IDs, and their vehicles will be clearly marked. Multiple incidents of frozen water bottles being thrown at incoming traffic are being investigated by Goliad County deputies. DPS is also joining the investigation, which was confirmed by the DeWitt County Sheriff's Office. Soon after he announced dropping out of the race, President Biden endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Harris for president has gained conflicting reviews. 25 News Now reporter Adarius McCormick spoke with local politicians about the president dropping out of the race. Uh, I immediately gave her my endorsement and said I would do everything in my power to support her here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You, if you want to lead this country, you should feel grateful for it. You should feel a sense of gratitude. And I never hear that gratitude come through when I listen to Kamala Harris. U.S. Representative Michael Cloud told us it's time for a president who will genuinely work for the American people, not against them. And we know Kamala Harris won't. An independent politician in Victoria says comments like this need specific incidents as proof. Saying that's great and it's going to make a great bumper sticker, but prove it to us. How? And if she did, I want to know about it. Tanya Lloyd, who's running against Michael Cloud for the District 27 congressional seat, disagrees with his assessment of the vice president. She said, I fully support Vice President Kamala Harris as our nominee now. She also said she respects Biden's decision like Wagner II. Now he's the president of the United States. People can show him all the data they want, but he can still run if he wanted to. So it came down to his own determination, his decision. Wagner II says if Vice President Harris wants to win this race, it'll be smart to follow Biden's policies. 
she would be very smart to embrace the last three years of what Biden has done in office. That every day, our President Joe Biden fights for the American people, and we are deeply, deeply grateful for his service to our nation. The full statements from Tanya Lloyd and Representative Michael Cloud are on our website, crosswordstoday.com. You can also find a statement from District 30 candidate A.J. Lauterbach, who wrote so much for the party of democracy. Some air travelers could continue to face delays. That's due to a software defect that's caused thousands of flight cancellations and delays since Friday. Most carriers say they're recovered or they're recovering, but Delta is still struggling. A statement from its CEO suggests the carrier's problems could continue into the week. For many affected airlines, the glitch involves computers used to check in passengers, but Delta says it's also impaired one of its crew tracking tools, making its problem worse. A new push this morning to impeach the head of the Secret Service after the assassination attempt on former President Trump. She now faces criticism for not providing enough answers about the agency's failures. New pressure overnight on Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle. South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace now filing an impeachment resolution against Cheadle hours after this blistering hearing on the security failures that led to the assassination attempt on former President Trump. Have you provided all audio and video recordings in your possession to this committee as we asked on July 15th, yes or no? I would have to get back to you. That is a no. Cheadle facing bipartisan calls to resign as she herself called the assassination attempt the most significant operational failure in decades. On July 13th, we failed. I take full responsibility for any security lapse of our agency. One lawmaker even taunting Cheadle, who previously worked in security at PepsiCo. He should be fired immediately and go back to Garden Doritos. Cheetah revealed that a local SWAT team spotted Thomas Crooks on the roof of that warehouse about 18 minutes before Trump took the stage. He's on the roof. He's on the and Cheadle says the Secret Service was alerted between two to five times about a suspicious person before the first shot was fired. But Cheadle says Crooks was not considered a threat until seconds before the shooting. As for why no security personnel were on that roof, Cheadle, in an interview with ABC's Pierre Thomas last week, suggested the slope of the roof posed a safety concern. But members of Congress visiting the site yesterday. It's not that steep at all. We just had a 70-year-old man back here climb up. Multiple investigations have been launched into the security failures, but lawmakers have expressed anger over the estimated 60 days it could take for the initial security service investigation to be completed. Cheadle pushed back yesterday against accusations that the Secret Service denied requests for more security at the rally. And she vowed not to resign, saying she is the best person to lead the Secret Service at this time. M1, ABC News, Washington. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Let's get a look at our time. It is 6.38 on our Tuesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. An American basketball great will be carrying the U.S. flag at the Olympics. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Vice President Harris clinching enough support from delegates to be named the Democratic Party's presumptive nominee. How she's hitting the ground running. Coming up. And also coming up after the break, we'll take another look at your radar, followed by your weather and health forecast. And later on Sunrise, we're going to take another look at all that rain still to come our way this week and why.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Cuero. Look at all those clouds and showers that are around the Cuero camera this morning. We'll look at that radar just a second because if you're not seeing the rain out there this morning or right now, you are still seeing some nice warm and humid temperatures and conditions sitting at 74 in Cuero and your humidity is at 95% because your dew point is one degree off from that temperature. But looking at your forecast for today, it's going to be we're not in the 90s. We are in the 80s, 84. I'm forecasting for here in Victoria with plenty more scattered thunderstorms going into the afternoon, mostly dying off before the evening. But rainfall up to three inches will be possible for some local areas today with those heavier showers. So please be careful with that. Turn around and don't drown if you see that rain on the road. But otherwise, looking at that radar, as promised, you can see we still got plenty of showers. And you, actually, you can see we were just looking at that Quero camera. There are a couple of showers kind of, kind of scattered around Quero, but they're not really raining in Quero. But I still think you will see plenty more rain come your way later today because with the rain today, the pollen's going to be nice and low. Air quality is going to be nice and good. And your UV index, that's going to be moderate with the cloud cover. But we do have alert day for the next few days because we're still expecting that heavy rain we're just seeing. And we're going to take a look at that in here in just a few more moments. And that's it for weather. Now we're look at sports with Max. Premier Prospects will be having its sixth annual Midnight Madness tournament. Here's director Ernest Gonzalez with some more details. You know, the only thing is is trying to stay awake, trying to keep teams to to stay awake, keep the girls busy, and then you know there's people out there that do fall asleep, but it, that's why they call it the Midnight Madness. Teams, uh, you know, they're they're pretty competitive and. And when they play each other pretty equal, so, you know, they, they run out of time. So we, we have to do a, a, what it, what's called an ITB, uh, International Tiebreaker. So you can catch this all-night tournament on Friday through Saturday morning, taking place at Victoria U Sports Complex for the Division 8 and 16U. Pool games will start that evening. Single elimination bracket games will be at midnight. First and second place winners will receive new Custom Coastal Bend Championship rings and medallions for the MVPs. This is Max Williams, 25 News Now Sports. Thank you, Max. All right, we want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. Now to the race for the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris has secured more than enough support from delegates to officially become the party's presumptive nominee. This morning, Vice President Harris starting her 2024 presidential campaign as the party's presumptive nominee after clinching endorsements from more than 2,000 convention delegates. Overnight, Harris saying she's proud to have secured the broad support needed. I look forward to formally accepting the nomination soon. Do we believe in the promise of America? Yes. And are we willing to fight for it? Yes. And when we fight, we win. Harris at campaign headquarters one day after President Biden dropped out of the race and threw his support behind her. The president calling in while recovering from COVID-19 at his Delaware home. You've always had my back and I promise you I will always have your back. The first black and Indian American woman vice president thanking her boss and turning to attack former President Trump leaning into her former role as a prosecutor. I took on perpetrators of all kinds. So hear me when I say I know Donald Trump's type. Harris casting her campaign as a choice between the future or the past. Donald Trump wants to take our country backward to a time before many of our fellow Americans had full freedoms and rights. But we are not going to let that happen. Harris's campaign raking in more than $81 million in just 24 hours. Trump posting multiple times on social media, clearly frustrated with Biden's decision to step aside, saying now we have to start all over again. In Virginia, his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, blasting the shakeup. She's not fit to serve either. We're going to get them both out of there. We're going to get President Donald J. Trump back in the White House. Vice President Harris heads to Swing State, Wisconsin today for a campaign rally scheduled before Sunday's news of Biden dropping out. It'll turn Harris's appearance into her first campaign stop as the party's presumptive nominee. M1, ABC News, Washington. And that leads us to your Vero poll. You can scan the QR code on your screen to take part. We ask you, have you ever donated to a political campaign? Okay, let's take a look. 30% of you say yes and 70% of you say no. We want to keep hearing from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. LeBron James will be waving the red, white, and blue during the opening ceremonies in Paris for Team USA. The basketball great learned the news Monday. 
He's named as the male flag bearer for Team USA. This will be James's fourth Olympics, having won gold medals in 2008 and 2012, along with the bronze in 2004. The opening ceremonies will be held in Paris this Friday. The time is now 6.46 on our Tuesday morning. Still to come, hackers are taking advantage of the major tech outage. Okay, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe. The actor turns 35 today. Ooh, happy birthday to the boy who lived from Harry Potter. <laughs> and also happy birthday to Woody Harrelson, the Cheers and Zombie Land actor is turning 63 today. Happy birthday, Woody. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to crossroadstoday.com. Click on more and under home, you'll see KBU to submit your birthday. The time is now 6.46 on our Tuesday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. That's right. Happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, Crossroads. We still got plenty more scattered showers and thunderstorms out there on our radar, and we're going to look at that now. You can see where all of the rain is this morning. We got lots of scattered showers coming into Victoria County as we speak, but also coming into Coero as well, but lots of stuff along the immediate coast that will soon be coming inland over the next hour or next actually for the rest of today. So get ready for that rain and get those umbrellas out. But if you're wondering where all of this rain is coming from, because usually this time it's end of July, we'd be in the hundreds, it would be hot and humid outside. 
It usually would be blazing right now, but that's not the case. We're going to be in the 80s because this is why this upper level low that just came off the West Coast that we've been tracking since last week. It actually came off of Washington. It rode all the way around that high pressure ridge that's dominated the West Coast and bringing them over there 110 to 120 for air temperatures. That is an absolute scorcher. But here in the crossroads, we're going to get that upper level low. And actually on Saturday, it's, it parked itself right there in the central Great Plains, and it is going to continue sitting right there as it has been for the last few days and will continue for the next few days sitting right there until tomorrow. And actually overnight tonight, there's going to be an, a very, very weak, unorganized tropical wave that is currently over the Yucatan. It's going to ride all the way along the Mexican coast into Texas, and that's going to mix with this low, and that's going to eventually push that low off into the northeast, eventually getting rid of the rain and high pressure returns to the central United States by next week, probably bringing back the heat. And I think we're going to have to pay for the heat or pay for all the rain that we just got with the heat. But well, as that high pressure returns, rain chances go down. And until then, we are still expecting up to possibly five inches of rain possible. But we're going to take a look at all that later on Sunrise. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Now to an experiment giving people free money with no strings attached. $1,000 a month. It was a study conducted by a pioneer in artificial intelligence. What they found might surprise you. This morning, new insight into whether a universal basic income could one day be sustainable. It's from a study conducted by Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, who has warned about major job losses across certain industries as artificial intelligence grows more powerful. The speed of the change that may happen here is the part that I worry about the most. Altman's study gave 1,000 low-income people $1,000 per month over a three-year period. It was free money, no strings attached. It's something Stress, former presidential candidate right, Andrew Yang supported during the 2020 campaign. This would create millions of jobs, make our children and families stronger, and give all Americans a better chance to transition in the economy of the 21st century. Altman's study found people mostly spent the extra money on basics, such as food, rent, and transportation. The largest increase in their spending was to help family and friends with their bills. Many people also put money in the bank. On average, with the extra money, they worked about one hour less per week. The research was conducted amid concerns that artificial intelligence will eventually make millions of jobs obsolete, leaving many people scrambling to find new ways to make a living. With every great technological revolution in human history, although it has been true that the jobs change a lot, some jobs even go away. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of that here. Critics dismiss the idea of a universal basic income as un-American, comparing it to socialism, saying it would lead to dependency and suffocate innovation in the economy. But tech industry titans, including Elon Musk, Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey, and the so-called godfather of artificial intelligence, Jeffrey Hinton, support it. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Be extra cautious on the World Wide Web. Authorities say hackers are taking advantage of the tech outage that's caused grief worldwide. They say cyber criminals are promoting fake websites with malicious software, including some with keywords like CrowdStrike, the name of the cybersecurity firm whose glitch sparked a global tech outage. These cyber criminals are using websites in an attempt to collect personal data and breach user devices. Currently, there is no automated fix for the CrowdStrike problem. The Biden administration wants the U.S. Supreme Court to allow enforcement of new anti-discrimination rules in schools across the nation. The new protections were supposed to start in August, but were blocked in 10 states. The new rules include civil rights protections for LGBTQ students. The administration is arguing to the high court that the lower courts erred when they blocked enforcement. Schools that receive federal aid are required to comply with Title IX rules. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. Vice President Kamala Harris is set to hold her first meeting with a world leader.
Vice President Kamala Harris is set to hold her first meeting with a world leader this week. On Monday, an aide to the VP announced she'll be meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The Prime Minister will address Congress on Wednesday, but Harris is not expected to preside over that. The aide says the Vice President plans to talk about several things with the Prime Minister, including concerns about the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Attorneys for Donald Trump have asked the New York Appeals Court to throw out February's $454 million judgment in his civil real estate fraud case. Trump, his sons Donald Jr. and Eric and the Trump Organization were found liable for fraud. They were accused of overhauling Trump's properties in financial transactions but undervaluing the properties for tax purposes. Trump's lawyers argue the monetary penalty is unconstitutional. The number of heat-related deaths in Texas since July 8th has climbed to 23 after Hurricane Barrel left millions without power. Read this story by the Texas Tribune via the Associated Press on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And now we have time for a final check of our forecast with Parker. It's a rainy sunrise out there for us, huh? It is a rainy sunrise, Carolyn. I hope you all are loving the rain as much as we are because we got lots of it coming our way for the next few days. But looking live right now in, in Port Lavaca, you can actually see a couple of showers that are out there right along the coast. We're going to look at that radar in just a second because if you're not seeing the rain, it's going to be no plenty warm and humid morning out there. All of us in the mid and upper 70s and your humidity is in the 90% range. But looking at that radar, you can see where all the rain is out there this morning. Got plenty of showers even coming into Victoria here in the next couple of minutes or so. But looking at where all of the heavy activity is, it's all out to our east, entering Matagorda County and also coming into uh, and to Jackson County as well. But otherwise, there's also a couple of stuff out to our west, our south, southwest that is well coming to Sea Drift, also East Refugio as well here very soon. So get those umbrella ready, folks. We got plenty of showers coming away for the rest of today. It might calm down just a tad bit going into the late afternoon and the early evening, but more will start developing in the overnight hours sometime after two or three. But otherwise, getting up to 84 for your high temperatures today with the rain and all of the beautiful state of Texas sticking in the 80s as well. But for the next few days, we still have the alert day issue because we are still expecting maybe five inches of rain possible. And then next week, we are right back to the heat. And Parker, we need to remind everyone that we still are in hurricane season, which That's is right. why I'm looking through our hurricane tracker guide, which you can pick up a copy of at Palace Bingo, at the El Campo Cycle Center, at Victoria All Sports, plenty of locations for you to pick up right. our hurricane tracker guide. Definitely, definitely going to need to prepare for this possibly very active hurricane season. Yes, it's already been very active. Yes. Well, join us tonight for 25 News now at 5, 6, and 10. Make it a great Tuesday.